Tuesday, January 11th, and the time for your Barbados Today Morning News update. The Barbados Labour Party's release of its manifesto has placed the incumbent political organization ahead of its opponents. That's the view of political science lecturer Dr. Christina Hines, who pointed out that so far the other parties have only delivered the promises on the political platform. Dr. Hines was responding to developments on the campaign trail over the weekend, most notably the BLP's manifesto, which include, among other things, promises of eliminating land tax on the first $400,000 of property value and the construction of 10,000 houses in five years. Well, I would definitely say that the BLP is slightly ahead of the Democratic Labour Party because it has released a manifesto that people can look to and they can read through the contents and decide whether the plan that the Barbados Labour Party has for the country is adequate, if it makes sense, if there are things in there that can be implemented and that are good for the country. So that's quite useful especially since sometimes it can be difficult when listening to platform presentations to decipher the exact policy mm. from what is, you know, campaigning and trying to rouse the crowd and get the votes. So it is useful that the BLT has a manifesto. By contrast, the Democratic Labour Party has not released theirs as yet, but it will wait and see what the content of this manifesto will include. Certainly they will release a manifesto at some point. A young aspiring politician is attempting to break down decades of loyalty to the country's two main political parties as he makes his bid for the Christchurch South constituency. Independent candidate Don Nicock believes the two-party system needs to be dismantled, which he says is one of his main reasons for contesting the January 19th general election. The 25-year-old also said he was not convinced that the Barbados Labour Party's 29-1 parliamentary majority is healthy for the existence of free and fair democracy. The former Harrison College student explained that he opted to run as an independent candidate to challenge traditional mindsets around politics, which, in his opinion, have been failing the masses. In other news, local authorities have approved two-thirds of uh, the applications received under the Barbados 12-month Welcome Stamp Program. And according to recent statistics compiled by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., with data received from the Barbados Immigration Department, most of those applications came from uh, the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Nigeria, and India. As at December 31st last year, the Long Stay Visitor Initiative received 3,257 applications, 2,163 of which were approved. The data also showed that of the applications received, 65% were from individuals and 35% from families. A further breakdown of the statistics revealed that 62% of the applications were male, while 38% were females. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living.
The news from the region now, teachers and students in Guyana are being urged to get vaccinated amid a surge of COVID-19 cases. More from News Source, Guyana. With reopened schools and an ongoing surge in new COVID-19 cases across the country, the Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, today urged unvaccinated teachers and students between the ages of 12 and 17 years old to get vaccinated. The minister said parents should be encouraging their children to get vaccinated and teachers should get vaccinated too. He explained that in many schools there are teachers who remain unvaccinated and those teachers are putting themselves and their families at risk. Parents need to really encourage their children if they haven't been vaccinated to really go out and make sure that they are vaccinated. That would help them to be safer. And secondly, um, teachers also need to you know, encourage children to be vaccinated. The growing number of positive COVID-19 cases across the country has left many parents uneasy with the decision by the Education Ministry to open schools for full-time face-to-face learning. The Minister of Health said it will be important for the schools to ensure that they follow all of the guidelines that have been put in place by the Ministry of Health to curb the spread of the virus. The Health Minister said it will be up to the Ministry of Education to ensure the guidelines are followed. And on the international front, U.S. authorities record a spike in the numbers of children testing positive for COVID-19 and hospitalizations. More from CBS News. Tonight, it's a red flag warning in the Houston area. In this time, it truly is a tsunami when it comes to those cases. It's like nothing we've seen before in this pandemic. The elevated threat level comes as the nation's pediatric cases are surging. Data just released by the American Academy of Pediatrics shows COVID cases have nearly tripled since the end of December and are now far exceeding the peak of past waves. There are now 580,000 child cases, a 78% increase. We're used to the unexpected, but the volume is really disappointing. It's, 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 it's exceeded our previous peaks. And it's spiking across the country. Hospitalizations in general are up almost 40% week over week, pushing health care to the brink. About a quarter of hospitals reporting a critical staffing shortage. Beyond health care, Omicron is crushing the nation's workforce. One economist says an estimated 5 million may have called out sick last week. What's happening right now with Omicron is so contagious where I don't really even want to be open for the employees because we may make each other sick. And the IRS today warned taxpayers they may have to wait longer for refunds due to pandemic-related delays. The nation's schools are also buckling under the strain. More than 5,000 across the country have gone virtual. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.